In this video, you'll learn about the ways grid views identify their rows via data source row indexes, row handles, and visible indexes. Data source indexes refer to records in the bound list. You'll use them for data editing. As you can expect, each data row has a unique index, while group rows simply refer to the first available data row and service rows will return negative values. Row handles are used by the grid view to identify rows of any type. Group rows have consecutive negative indexes, service rows have predefined values, and data rows have positive indexes. Finally, visible indexes enumerate all rows in the order they are visible on screen. These identifiers are mainly used to implement row navigation. Let's take a closer look at when to use each type of row identifier and how they differ from one another. If you have plain data displayed by the grid, then these three identifiers are usually the same in each row. All of them are row indexes that start with zero. Sorting data is one way to see the difference between these identifiers. The order of records has changed and the data source index is followed. Same rows are identified by the same data source indexes, but the order is now different. On the other hand, row handles and visible indexes are still consecutive integers starting with zero and they match each other in each row. A similar effect is achieved when you filter rows. Data is reloaded, row structure is being rebuilt, and so visible indexes and row handles are updated to reflect the new structure, while data source indexes follow their corresponding rows. An important takeaway is that row handles and visible indexes change in response to user actions. Let's create a simple example to illustrate this point. A button in the ribbon control will save the currently focused row's handle. To do this, declare an integer saved row handle field and assign the grid view's focused row handle property value to it. There's also a change value button. Its click event handler uses the set row cell value method to set the name column cell to an empty string within the saved row. Run the application and first focus the row with Audi A6. Click the Save Index button, then Move Focus Away, and finally click the Change Value button. As expected, the cell in the saved row has been changed. Now restart the application. First sort the name column, then locate the row showing Audi A6. Save the row's handle, which is now 2, using the Save Index button. Then clear sorting and notice how the row's handle has changed. So if you press Change Value, it will not change in the Audi A6 row that was supposedly saved. To fix this, you need to modify the code so that it stores data source indexes instead of row handles. Then in the Change Value Handler, convert the stored index into a row handle and only then apply the change. And let's run the application to see that the code works as expected even when using data shaping operations such as sorting or filtering. Next, let's see what happens when you group data. One of the key differences between row handles and data source indexes is that row handles for group rows are negative integers. There are obviously no data source indexes for group rows because they don't exist in the data source. So the values shown in group rows are indexes of the first data row within the group. One more thing worth noting is that row handles for data rows are always non-negative integers. If you want to iterate through all rows in the grid control's memory, you can simply enumerate row handles from zero to the view's data row count property. Let's take a look at a buttons click event handler that does exactly this to clear values in the name column for all currently loaded rows. The handler code is wrapped into the begin update and end update method calls to avoid multiple updates to the view. It starts with the row handle equal to zero and then enumerates all integers up to the data row count property value. The loop body calls the set row cell value method to clear the value in the name column. And run the application. First, filter the records to display only Audis. Click the button and see the names cleared. Now remove filtering and group data by make. You'll see the name column has been cleared in the Audi group, but other makes still have the data. So only those rows that matched the filter criteria were loaded into the memory. 
If you press the clear name button now, the change will affect all rows in expanded or collapsed groups. The grouped view also reveals an important difference between row handles and visible indexes. First, visible indexes still start with zero and the value is incremented with each visible row, be it a group row or a data row. Secondly, you'll notice that row handles are already assigned to all rows loaded into memory, including those in collapse groups. Expand and collapse operations on group rows don't affect row handles. Visible indexes, on the other hand, will be recalculated with each expanded state change to account for rows that have become visible or hidden. Let's illustrate the usage of visible indexes by implementing a button that navigates to the next visible row in the view, an alternative to pressing the down key. The handler first determines the focused row's visible index using the getVisibleIndex method that takes a row handle as a parameter. Next, the code increments the obtained visible index and finally converts it back to a row handle value using the getVisibleRowHandle method and sets the focus using this newly obtained handle. Now run the application. You'll see that the button works in both plain and grouped views. One last thing worth mentioning in this overview is that special types of rows, such as the new item row, are assigned predefined row handle values. To see how you can use these predefined values, handle the before leave row event. The grid control has static fields specifying them. This also includes the invalid row handle value that is returned by some methods if a row handle cannot be obtained. In the code, check whether the current row is the new item row, and if so, display a confirmation message box. And run the application. Focus the new item row, and then try to change focus back to one of the data rows. If you click no, the focus will stay unchanged. Remember, grid views provide methods allowing you to convert row identifiers into one another. To see how this works, let's analyze the handler that displays row index information in this application. There are three columns. One displays visible indexes, another row handles, and the third data source indexes. They are unbound and are populated using the custom unbound column data event. The code first obtains the row handle using the data source index passed as a parameter. Then the visible index is determined using the row handle. After that, all the values are displayed in their corresponding columns. Let's go over the key points once again. First, the data source indexes specify zero based row indexes in the bound list. Follow rows when you sort, group, or filter data. For group rows, they'll point to the first data row in the group, and they're used for accessing data. Second, row handles. Data row handles are zero-based indexes that correspond to row order from top to bottom. Group row handles are negative values that start with negative one. The order matches the order of group rows from top to bottom. The grid specifies reserved row handles for new item row, auto filter row, and an invalid row handle how handles are reassigned to rows after each data operation. And when the view is filtered, rows and row handles are created only for rows that match the filter. And finally, visible indexes. Zero-based indexes that match the order of visible rows from top to bottom. Service rows get negative indexes if displayed above data and group rows. Reassigned after each data operation, including data sorting, grouping, and filtering. Visible indexes are only assigned to rows in expanded groups. Thus, the indexes are updated after each expand collapse operation. And this ends the overview of row identifiers. You'll now be able to obtain and use proper identifiers depending on the task you need to accomplish.